Harry, another match ball. They say goal scorers keep count. How many are you on for England now? Do you know? Uh, a few of the boys were asked me that. It's 30 or 31, I think. 31. Oh, I'll take it. 31. Gone past Alan Shearer tonight, amongst others. 31, I think. 31. Oh, I'll take it. 31. Gone past Alan Shearer tonight, amongst others. Well, yeah, obviously, we all know how uh, impressive Shearer was at scoring goals, so... It's a nice milestone to hit, but um, yeah, hopefully a few more to come. The key stat, of course, is the team have qualified for Euro 2020. Sum up what that represents and the way the group's gone. Yeah, no, really good. Obviously, we've had uh, one slip up in the whole group in, in the last camp. Uh, responded really well. Got the job done here today. We wanted to put on a, a show. Obviously, been a thousand England game. Um, and yeah, five and a half at half time uh, definitely showed that. Have you made the group look easy, or have some of the opposition, to be frank, not been as good as you might have expected? Well, I think any any game at an international level can be tough, especially away from home. So we've dealt with that quite well. Of course, we're expected to, to win the group as we have done. Uh, but it's never easy. Football's uh, a game where you've seen a lot of upsets. Uh, we've qualified. We should be proud of that. Uh, but of course we know we've got a lot of work to, to do until the summer. Raheem Sterling, I'm sure, would have wanted to be involved tonight. As, as captain, how do you sum up that decision to leave him out this week? Yeah, we made a decision as a group. Uh, the gaffer spoke to, to me and a few of the, the other senior players in, in the team. Um, and that is the decision we, we come to. So uh, Raz has uh, apologised, as we know. And, and for us, it's, we're a group. Uh, things happen. Uh, and yeah, we move on. And, and this was a great way to show it. Is there any chance he might feel marginalised? By what's happened this week? Uh, not that I know of. Obviously, he's been good around camp. He's been training really well. Uh, of course, he'd have been disappointed not to play today, but uh, I'm sure he'll be ready to go and, and try and get on the pitch on Sunday. Yes, and you coming off early, and Alex Oxley Chamberlain coming off early, you'll be ready to go again on Sunday. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You want to play in every England game. Uh, another opportunity for us to, to finish well. Uh, of course, we want to win that game away from home, so we'll enjoy this, uh, but of course, with one eye on Sunday. Thank you, Harry. Cheers. Thank you. Gareth Southgate did say before the game that Raheem Sterling would play in uh, Kosovo on Sunday. So England, having lost in Prague, Ashley 2-1, have responded by winning 6-0 and 7-0. We don't want to say there are any easy games in international football, but they've made the last two look easy, England. Yes. Uh, We'll come to Roy after. (laughs) No, I think if you look at the quality tonight, from uh, Montenegro, it was not good. Uh, when they strung maybe four or five passes together, yeah. at times they looked okay, yeah. but obviously with, with the way England pressed and got after the ball, it was always going to be uh, a high scoreline. And you played with some great centre forwards. You played with Wayne Rooney for England, you played with Drogba, you played with Henri. What, what, when you look at Harry Kane, I mean, he's got this phenomenal goal scoring record. What, what do you see? A pure out and out goal scorer or more than that? No, I don't want to be, you know, disrespectful about him and say he's just a goal scorer. Yes, he knows where the goal is. He's always in between the two sticks, as they say. But he has, he has that little cleverness, you know, how he brings players into it. Uh, but when he gets in front of the goal, he finished left, right, header, chest, where, wherever it comes. He's got the quality to finish it and take his chances. Yeah, and he never wants to stop, does he? I mean, you could imagine he didn't really want to come off. He'd have happily just carried on and tried to get another three. You know, he's he's never satisfied. Yeah, well, I, I think all strikers are like that. They want to score goals, and as we said, the, the quality of the opposition today was not great. So yeah, he probably see goals today, uh, but he should be happy with his contribution yeah. tonight with the three goals. I think, I think early in the season when he wasn't when. He wasn't playing particularly well for Tottenham. He started to go wandering around the pitch and dropping short halfway line, all that lot. And the more goals he gets, the more he reminds me of Lineker in as much as he, he tends to be around the goal a lot more than he used to be. And I, and I think that's because he's just driven by how many goals he can get now. And that's a, a brilliant thing for a centre forward. Um, and he, you know, it's easy to say they were easy goals. They're rubbish opposition tonight, let's face it. But you've still got to be there and he'll put that ball next to his other two balls he's got for England and it won't make, make any difference to him. And if he stays fit, we looked at that list there, 31 and 44, you know, you, you double the amount of caps, double the amount of goals, you could see him, you could see him easily going past Wayne Rooney, couldn't you? Yeah, you would have tossed, unless he obviously gets any sort yeah. of injury. A brilliant player, no doubt, brilliant goal scorer, but when you look at the group they've been in, and if they keep getting groups like that, he scored about 2,000 goals, you know, really <laughs> shocking, but all good strikers, loves putting the ball in the back of the net, whether it be in training against lesser opposition, Good night for him, um, and a, a brilliant player, to be fair to him. Yep, and in the second half, a couple of goals for England in the second half. The first one, an own goal, Lee, a bit of a sort of pinball wizard sort of own goal, was it, in the end? Yeah, he was, and I mean, he's 
half decent play. I mean, Rashford's brilliant here. He shows his pace. That's what he's all about. And when the ball comes to the, the defender, it, it kind of sums him up. Yeah. You know, the, why he's swinging his foot like that? It, they get a bit of luck when it bounces to him. But they, you know, I mean, Harry's going to say he's going to say that about the opposition. There's no doubt about that. But you do get easy games at international level, and they won't get much easier than that. This back four is one of the worst I've seen. And actually, Tammy Abraham has done so well. We were just talking off air. Chelsea spent a lot of money over the last 15 years on centre forwards. They haven't all come off. This young man, we know that there's a transfer ban, has taken his chance so well at Chelsea. And there's his first senior goal for England. Yeah, I think in terms of style, he is a little bit like Harry. He, he, he knows where the goal is. He wants to be in front of, in front of the goal. Uh, and of course, uh, Sancho with a great cross. And Tammy's where he wants to be in front of the goal. But... At the moment, he's, he's not needing too many <coughs> chances to finish mm. now. You know, he's getting one or two chances and, and he's burying them, yeah. which is a good sign for any striker. Yeah, I mean, he took a chance on the weekend really well. I mean, he's in that sort of form, aren't you? How impressed have you been with him this season? Outstanding. Yeah. I think, obviously, we've said it before, he's gone out on loan. He's by this time and, and, and key for any young player. When you get the opportunity, but at a big club or international, you got to take him. And he's taken him, so full credit to him. Yeah. Yeah, he's a player. There's no doubt about that. And he's only going to get better. And now he's getting goals. It's a brilliant position for him to be in. He's getting a chance. He's on that Chelsea pathway. England have qualified for the Euros next summer. We'll hear from Gareth Southgate, a very happy man, after the break. A very good end to what was quite a tricky start to the week. Significant night for Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. First start in 19 months in an England shirt. First goal since June 2017. Got the ball rolling for England. And here he is with Gabriel Clark. Alex, well done. Uh, first England start, I think, in 19 months. It looked like you relished being back. Yeah, it's obviously nice to be back um, in the starting lineup. It's, it's obviously been a while. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to do the things, concentrate on doing the things that the manager and um, Steve have been talking about this week from, and the rest of the coaches, um, from specifically, obviously, us in the eight role. Um, but then, obviously, the whole team in general as well, both attacking and defending. So I just tried to focus on that. And um, we obviously got quite a lot of joy in that first half from that. So, uh, no, overall, it was, it was nice for me to be back and with a performance like that um, and good for us to finish off the qualifying like that. And to cap it with a goal as well. That must feel special. Yeah, um, sort of been in a bit of uh, good form with, with the goals recently. So, you know, when the chance sort of came up, um, I felt confident to take the shot. And, yeah, it's nice to see that one go in. And obviously, it's always special to, to score for England. You've played with a few sets of England players over your time in, in squads. How do you rate the, the attacking potential, what this particular group of players has? I think, um, yeah, it's right up there. I think you can see it. It's young, it's exciting, um, and it's full of ability. Um, but they're, they're a really good group of players as well that want to work hard as well and do the defensive jobs too but no if you uh, if you catch them on the wrong day it could be a, a tricky 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 day for defenders and um, there, there's some really really good talent up there well England that's Alex Oxlade Chamberlain this is Gareth Southgate with Gabriel Gareth a landmark night but the big statistic England have qualified for Euro 2020 what pleased you most in terms of uh, the team's performance and, and those goals yeah, I think the attacking play in the first half in particular, uh, really good movement, some uh, super quality of passing and crossing um, and, uh, you know, clinical finishing. So um, we know it's a group that we, we should win comfortably, but you can see around Europe there are other countries who struggle to score goals like we have. Yeah. Do you think you've played weaker opposition than normal or do you think you've just made that opposition look weaker? Uh, I think a bit of both really um, I think in the past we've maybe struggled against those lower ranked teams and who, who defend in numbers um, we've got players that can open those teams up and a style of play that can do that so um, for sure it's a group we, we expected to win but we've done it clinically Do you feel as well looking now towards next summer with the more offensive style different to the system you used in Russia that England will have a better chance down the line at the, uh, at the, the, uh, the real end of that tournament to make a difference, to be in uh, in terms of a winning position? Well, we'll have to get both ends of the pitch right. Um, you know, we conceded a couple of chances tonight that we shouldn't, and um, they're the sort of clinical things that we'll have to be better at. Um, so we've still work to do without the ball, but um, we're, we are getting, you know, we are improving. England have got so much attacking threat, that's never really in doubt. Oxley, chamberlain hudson Adoy, Sterling, Rashford, Tammy Abraham, Kane, Sancho, that's not it. Going ahead to the Euros, is there a concern in your mind, Ashley, about the defence? Even, even tonight, especially in the first half, a couple of chances given away. 
Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably say I don't know if Gareth knows he's back four, uh, which for me would be one concern. Mm. And then not knowing your kind of favourite or, or better players who should play, are they good enough and do they have that little lapse in concentration even in these kind of games? Now you're going to tournaments, is that going to affect England? That would probably be the little worry I have. Because those two chances they gave away in the first half, we've said it before, but it's worth repeating, and, and, and Italy, uh, Spain, uh, Holland, uh, Germany, France, they're going to make England pay for what, what they gave up in the first half. Yeah, and it's not just this game, we've seen it before, and conceding chances in the midfield, we, we highlighted it the last few games, also set pieces in the last game, uh, corners have been a problem, corner, corner was a problem tonight as well. Um, just losing the man John Stones just got a little bit caught out there looked at the ball got a little chance and this one two centre half split straight down the middle if that's happening against these teams and it's happened before we've got to get the balance between the midfield how we close down how we press and how many times we get caught the wrong side of our midfield and we get hit on the break that can't happen against the good teams otherwise we, we lose you throw the ball like that through to Mbappe it's 1-0 to France that's the point we're talking about the highest <coughs> level now for England going forward yeah, you have to be self-critical and Gareth's mentioned there when you're out of possession it's probably good when the attacking players England have got but that's just lack of concentration and, um, and if you want to I suppose try and win these big tournaments then you've got to be self-critical and they've got to cut their mistakes out. What sort of balance should they be looking for in midfield? I mean Oxley chamberlain did well there. What do England need in that midfield three? Well I suppose what they've got in the group in terms of players being on the front foot, comfortable on the ball, obviously being a goal threat, yeah. we've seen that. But Garrett's got a lot of, I, I always class them as high class problems mm. in terms of the attacking players and it's just picking, getting the right chemistry and uh, the right characters into your team. I mean, Oxley Chamberlain d d done himself no harm, particularly now he's got that goal threat. He got four and four for Liverpool. He scores again tonight. Yeah, yeah. E ever since I've known him, he's been a threat in front yeah. of goal. Uh, his timing of runs in behind uh, is improved. Uh, and yeah, it, it seems like he, he's coming back to full fitness. And I would like to see him in the midfield, to be honest. I think he brings a lot of energy, uh, a lot of you know, attacking threat. Uh, and he could go out wide as well, so I would like to see him. Start. Yeah, he brings that versatility, doesn't he? If you play Oxley Chamberlain, he does. Then and, and Mount as well. He's got that late run in the box. We, we've got potential to get into the box from midfield. It's the other side of the midfield. How you how you combine that with a defensive style? You know, Declan Rice going in there. He looked a bit laboured at times against the better side. Is he going to get run off? Um, Henderson, you play the both of them, then you lose one of those midfield players. So they seem to have a system. It's just getting the balance right between the attack and the defence to knit the back and the, and, and the forwards together. And the two centre backs as well. Is that where's that partnership? That needs to be solid. Now there's three games before the, the championship. We need to have who's our centre halves. Well, you've got three games really, but and then the two after the squads are announced. Absolutely. You know, with your international hat on as well. That's you know, time is now pressing, isn't it? He needs to make some, you know, if you like, make some final decisions on. Really, going forward, who's going to play in the Euros? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. And we talk about the two centre halves, but it's great having options. It's getting, it's picking the right combinations yeah. that will make England a threat to win the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much indeed. Ashley, come and see us again soon. Thank you. I don't know where Mr. Wright is or when he'll be back or <laughs> if he'll be back. What shape he'll be in? He'll anyway. be a lot thinner. <laughs> Thank you very much. Highlights of all today's games, including more reaction from here at Wembley. France and Portugal also in action. Ronaldo's enjoyed himself this evening and done well again. Join us at 10.45 for that. After that, there's a second chance to see Out of Their Skin with Mr Ian Wright, who tells the story of the struggles of black players in England. Worth tuning in for that. That follows the highlights at 11.45. And we travel to Kosovo on Sunday for the final quarter qualifier at 4.15. So 1,000 up for England as they qualify for the Euros and a grand old night for Harry Kane. Thanks for your company. Good night.